Hey guys, it is me, Emin Ashurviaz, and today we'll be on with the last and final Amphibia uh, episode review and analysis, and this is season 3, episode 18, The Hottest Thing. This episode got premiered at 8, and it's like 10 for me now, 2 hours later. Got time to think about everything, my PC also kept freezing up too. But beside all that, it's finally time to go and talk about the episode. First of all, I've got a brand new pop filter on my microphone, so it might even sound a lot better this episode. But also, spoilers one, this will be spoiling everything of Amphibia, all three seasons possibly, so you know, if you don't want to get spoiled, just please leave now. And also, the quality of the video may not be too good, you know, the whole entire quality here because that's because it came out and, you know, finding HD quality through the video on, you know, I'm trying to do the first one, is going to be definitely pretty difficult. But without further ado, let's go and hop into the Amphibia. It starts off with the whole entire logo here, you know, like, also all ended, pretty amazing. And then after that, you know, like, they technically showed the core and how the core went to the moon. And, you know, how he was able to bring the moon closer. And then Andrew has seen that. And he's like, oh, it's the core's last gambit. And then Anne's like, oh, so you never tell us this. Then after that, you know, Mother Orm came out and talked about the prophecy. And also took Anne aside, talking about some magic spell that, you know, if she uses it, it could save Amphibia, but it come at the cost of her life. So, yeah. The minute I heard that, I was like, she's dying. She's dying but i didn't want to believe it you know because it's disney not everyone has to die so after that it's time to do the transformation so they all get their anime powers the calamity form is the one thing that i've been hyping up and then the minute i saw these on screen i was screaming then we got here all their calamity powers i'm trying to find the exact photo of all of them yes this is it we got here Anne. Is still with her hair, but it has a little bit longer, longer twigs, and the whole armor and everything. And you guys can see, so we can't really tell what uh, Sasha's and Marcy's powers would have looked with only half of the gemstone in there. But we could definitely see her the calamity forms and air. And yes, sadly, uh, Marcy's hair does not have the seashells, and yes, uh, Sasha's hair does not have the lava rocks. But you know, still, still pretty good. I definitely love these outfits, and I was just waiting for them to be announced. And I'm like, here they are. It was just perfect. It was perfection. But yes, after that, the hive mind, I mean, the king was up there. He was just chilling up there, you know. And then after that, all of them are going up there. They make different weapons, some smooth animation with all of them, you know. Also, Masha being extremely happy. And then, you know, what's going on? Andreas is seeing all this. The core is trying to convince him, to, you know, to do if he helps now, he'll be able to be in the hive mind forever. So, he, he orders all robots the minute i heard this i was like wow did they just turn a brilliant villain of redemption that's a brilliant redemption back into a villain i was like that's the biggest plot twist probably you know besides you know but it's the biggest plot twist not a cool thing you know like these cool anime paths but then after that plot twist we get an even bigger plot twist he betrayed the core and it turns out that he was actually doing that to help push the moon back and he destroys the core's you know uh hat thing so this is so Andrew steals redemption and Alice is a prank. So plot twist at the plot twist in under a minute. Amazing. We can see all the calamity pass, and then Anne finally realizes she can't do this. So sadly, she she tells them to go back and they have to give up the stones. And after that, they have to go. And Anne's gonna use all the uh, the stones and use a whole prophecy to go and you know sacrifice her life to save Amphibia. After this, it was extremely sad, so I was like, she's dying, this is it. And then she sent them back Earth, and it's like, come back alive, and Brun Choi, you know, exactly what we saw or her from the trailer. And after that, they came went back and told them everything that happened. And then Sprig was not having any of that. He went with Frobo and started chasing Ant. But after that, she used the gems, she asked for it, and then when they, you know, they'll see this humongous portal stopping the moon. They're all just like, you know, chilling out, watching. But then the saddest thing happens. This is Anne. I don't know what happened. It was like one show that someone someone took a star or something, but I totally forgot what it was. But anyways, she's Anne's is here and Sprig is asking to hold her hand and take his hand and come back. This was definitely the most saddest thing. Yes, they could have used the gems and, and all go to Earth and be like a star with the force of evil ending. All worlds combined. And you know, amphibious let amphibia get destroyed. But no, they actually didn't do that. I'm happy they didn't do that. But this is still extremely sad and for me, probably the most saddest thing in this entire episode. And then after that, Annie gets here all cracking up while she goes and talks to Sprig, you know, so sad. And then after that, what's going on? We see the car get destroyed and that's it. They won, right? But no, 
at the sacrifice cost of Anne's life. She's all cracked up. Looks like one of the gems from Steven Universe is here. And she says the, the her number one mistake she did, you know, she wishes she didn't do was watch this island, the island, Suspicious Island, I think. Or oh, was, the other, I mean, there's the other episode with two of the characters, you know, the, the whole season one episode. I sadly forgot the name of it, but it was from season one where, you know, the whole episode and they're fighting about which one's the best character for her. Yeah, you know that show. But sad, that I sadly forgot the name, but she's like, that's the biggest regret she didn't watch it. Because in all of them, you saw the poster of part two coming out. But after that, she turns to flowers. And then we get an ad break. And I'm just going on Twitter because I never had ads watching this live. And everyone on Twitter was like, bro. Like, who puts an ad break out to that? And I was like, chilling out to 12 minutes, no ad break. Then we got the trailer, the scene from the end of the trailer that everybody was looking for. Then after that, it's in this like house. And we see this old computer saying, Hello, Anne, it's called the Stones of Destiny. And it turns out that, that it's the Cosmic Guardian who has, you know, watched over all of them. And then it, it transforms to a cat, Domino. And the minute I saw it transform to Domino, I like screamed out to my sister, like, you know what this means? It's the exact line they said from that whole episode when she went to the dentist. It's like Domino is not just a normal cat. She's the Alpha and Omega, the the Guardian of the World, uh, something like that. Wait, I need to remember it. So it's, it's, it's Domino's not just a cat. She's the Alpha and Omega, like a a, a spin beyond Earth itself, space and Earth itself. And this is so funny how she said this. It was just silly, you know. But then the Guardian of the Cosmo uh, Stones, uh, Stones became a cat, became Domino. This was a silly, and I just really love how they actually did that. And then after that, yeah, so it turns out that Anne did die, but they made, she made a, the Guardian made a copy, and, you know, she's not really a cat, she just can't show true self, you know. You know, if she does, it'll just blow her mind, and it will. It, it technically almost did. But then after that, uh, the cat, you know, explains how she'd be looking for someone to replace her place for thousands of years, and some of that really kind of hard. Put the stones on Earth because, you know, she's technically testing it out to see if the stones could be good in good hands, and if it could be you know, able to be nice with it. And, you know, what happened? They're like, oh, I'm gonna go cron conquer the world. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know, everything happened. And it was the only one that used him for good power, so, you know, the cat wanted her to become a guardian, but the cat gave her a choice to go back to Earth or become, you know, a guardian. So, and she chooses to go on Earth. The cat's just extremely mad because, you know, the, the cat, she really just wants to, <laughs> she wants to get a break. She uses the Cosmo Guardian, you know. So the cat gets mad, but then gives her the choice. Brings her back with three, th with three little stones, but guess what? Before she did that, she did say, let's see you back in 78 years. And it's like, what do you mean 78 years? And it gets cuts off. So most likely she's 13 now. So 13 plus 78 is like 91. So she gonna like immediately die at 91 and just become a guardian. And also this is the cat. And that's what she said. Like, imagine, so you're 13 now, like all the wise choices you made. Like imagine a whole lifetime. And you know, this is like the whole cat. This is like Domino's true form. Look at the three crystals. It's, it's just amazing. But after that, Anne makes it back. They're all sad. And Hop Hop's like, when she came back, Hop Hop's like, stop it, Anne. We're trying to like mourn a loss or something like that. And Anne was on talking. And the mourning loss of Anne. And then Sprague was just slowly reacting. as this priceless, amazing. So after that, they go, you know, after ad break, they go use the gems and leave after some sad ending. All of them, all the three groups, you know, Andreas, Olivia, and Yunnan, you know, with that. They're all giving them all the stuff for saying goodbyes. You know, Sasha and Grime try acting all serious, but then break down crying. This perfect, the strong ones go down crying. Perfect. And also see Polly, you know, all sad. All of them saying good, the goodbye. Extremely sad. And Sprig just the saddest. It's just like, he didn't want to say goodbye. You know, it's just so sad. We got an amazing animation of like, you know. And also, she gave him his phone, or her phone, you know, to keep. So that was amazing. I love that. And after that, yes, even though I thought she would have maybe kept the phone because all the memories. But they also could, she could have backed it up or could have gave it to, you know, Sasha so they have the memories with them. But, you know, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So, you guys see here, they opened up the portal, and after that, they went. They went back. You guys see here, it was an amazing animation, spinning animation, and after that, you guys see here, Sprig is missing, right? So, I thought he got sucked, sucked in with the portal with her. But, nope, the next frame, he's back, he's, he's there, and disappears again. Animation hour, but, you know. I thought he actually went to Earth. But then we get the one thing that we did not think we were ever going to get. A 10 minute, I mean 10 year skip. We see Andrews with his missing arm, old and looks like the, your neighbor that you never want to talk to. And then we see the exact same opening 
like season one with the fly, the guy took away by a fly. You see Wally saying good evening with all of them. And I'm like, okay, it's not a time skip because you know, you see Wally, he looks the exact same. But then, what well, was like one, yeah, Polly. Polly grew up. And I was like eating candy when I was watching this too, so I just dropped the candy. Looking like, bruh, bruh. Wally looked the exact same, don't know how, but then Polly all grown up, you know, with the whole hair and everything. And also, you know, Polly had a little hair before they went to the portal, so you know, kind of showed time skip. But then, you know, it was just like, I was like, bro, why you guys to see her, uh, I forgot her name, dang it, her, Maddie, yeah, that's her name, Maddie, you can see her all growing up, her tadpoles are still tadpoles with feet now, and now they have feet. You guys to see, uh, Loggle, he has no muscles anymore, he lost all his muscles, okay, I guess what happens when I skip one day of walkout, <laughs> that's what happens, poor Loggle, and also, uh, the... The toadstool, I think, it's, and he brought little. Ah, oh, dang, I forgot his name. You know the please voice act by Fix It Felix. He's the new mayor. After that, we see Livia and Yunnan. You know, canon. <laughs> and then, after that, we officially see that Hop Hop is still alive. Well, it's me and everyone else. But mostly, would have probably thought he would have died after a ten-year time skip. But nope. Out of all the odds. Hop Hop beat his fate. <laughs> he was getting out of his fate. He, everyone gets, he's beat the theories. Everyone thought he was going to die and he didn't. We can see him with, I sadly forgot her name, but she's still there. You know, they're all still living. Polly, you know, still there. And then we see grown ups break. His hair is going through his hair. I guess he didn't shave it. And then after that, you can see him drawing using the phone Polly was talking to come. And also, you can see um, Ivy with a whole bunch of hair growing too. And you see all the whole characters unreveal and revealing the statue of Anne. It looks like some posters going around. It looks like they're doing this every year, like an anniversary for Anne, I think. That's pretty amazing. And also, they're talking about how the many different continents and some of us found a new continent. It's like new species of frog gonna be there because you know, like newts, toes, and all that. Is it's a new species? But then after that, we get transported also not root of reference. Or yeah, my sister caught that. And also, I think Pokemon in a different anime. Then after that, we see flashback. Then after that. It also, this is how we knew it was 10 years that passed. It's finally said 10 years. Then after that, we see Mossy all grown up. And then after that, we meet Sasha also all grown up. And I'm just freaking out like, bro, 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 bro. And you guys, it's just hitting us here and here and here with new characters. And like, Anne, it's like suspension Anne, you know? Yeah, it's just here. This is all them. Also, Mossy tripped because, you know, klutzy, amazing. I kept that in still. And they're all in the car talking about if they ever met Anne, something like that. And it's like, yeah, after after you left, and so after they left on the plane. So, yes, she still left the moving with her parents. So that problem solved her ass. But she, and then Tasha said after a couple of years, you know, talking, everything kind of went their separate ways. So, you know, they kind of stopped talking. But after that, after driving and a lot of talking, it's tripped us. Uh, First over to like a, a museum or and the end credits out to roll. I'm like, oh no, this is the end. And then we see Anne talking when holding a little frog, doing a frog exhibit. And you guys see this frog here, also the like 23 now, 10 years past, the 13th or the 23 now, if you're wondering. And you guys can see the frog looks exactly like Sprig. He's talking about frogs and like, what's his name? And she says, Sprig. Like, that's when I call him Sprig after best friend. And this is how grown up Anne looks. I guess she's like a frog doctor or animal doctor now walking at the zoo. And then the whole, and then she puts it down on the twig, and then a, a twig or a stick. And you guys can see how the house looks exactly like the amphibia land too. And then after that, she sees Mossy and Sasha just chilling out. They haven't seen each other for so long. They're all ganging up, or you know, just being friends again. And then after that, in the back of me, you can see get lost in amphibia. This is low quality, but I get lost in amphibia. And you guys can see little sprig. Oh, you know, the sprig frog is sitting there looking. And then the saddest thing I ever seen, the end play instead of saying end of book three end of part three like you know part one and two did it says the end and after that it ended and this is extremely sad because this is it the series finale but if we think that's actually gonna be it no we still got the mossy journal to see and there's some theories saying the journal is gonna be about you know mossy's life her parents life before going to amphibia and after an amphibia that's what everyone thinks the whole type book's gonna be about also we didn't know this the mother of Ohms, just chilling down with other ohms here too if you didn't notice that i just noticed this right now as i'm talking about this also whole toads and all this stuff really cool really amazing 
But that helps you guys to see a whole exhibit to Ohms, so that's also pretty cool and amazing. But then after that, you know, we still have the spin-off series. It's not 100% canon, not 100% official, but he says, I think they're open to make a spin-off series. And now the question in the whole debate is, if they make a spin-off series, what is it going to be about? And I definitely do think it would be better for Amphibia, because, you know, like everyone is talking about now, how their whole entire Earth, the whole closer, everything's, you know, done over with. Really, the whole characters, all the... A character is thankfully solved. Nothing really to do now. It's talking about their lives now. And what I've, I I would have loved to add like an extra three minutes. Even my sister said this too. Like a montage. Showing them all grow up and, you know, going through their lives. That would have been really cool. You know, sadly it didn't happen. But yes, this is sadly it. There's no more analysis to do. We just like showing all of this stuff and like this. But there's no more else to really talk about except for Sally Amphibia is sadly done. And if we do get a spinoff series, I hope it's about Amphibia and all of them growing up sprig and all that. Showing, you know, maybe Anne's kids here and there like that. It's going to be like one or two seasons, you know, showing the future Amphibia. Or maybe like more about the past of Amphibia. Because we didn't really know what happened with, you know, how leaf we don't know who mr p is they created the book or the p the person that created that whole book that talked about the music box in the first place we don't know that whole vase what was up with that vase we didn't know really like lots of different things from amphibia that went to earth we didn't know like lots of the past so we could be a spin-off series talking about the past first like one season and then the other season about the new future and then you know the present and all future and stuff like that that would be i think a good spin-off series and i would love that but right now this is an open ending like he said and i gotta say props this is right now my most favorite disney channel so and it definitely is in this episode all i mean the hottest thing is definitely my most favorite episode of all time like usually for me it takes me a couple days to think about if this is a good episode or not a good episode but no when i was done watching i was like this is it this is the best episode for me all in is definitely the third my bet the third favorite episode the hottest i mean the the true colors that episode is still my second most favorite episode but then this episode is easily easily the first and uh, best episode in my opinion so our theories of hop hop did not come true of dying did not come true and i think we're glad about that <laughs> the whole arm theory and losing arm sasha losing an eye and, and Masi losing a leg did not come true and i guess it's still good too and homes of things of them getting trapped in amphibia or them you know getting trapped in a different dimension all also didn't happen i guess it's also good and true but the whole all of them separating being a sad ending is is what actually happened but anyways like i said guys to make the comments below what do you guys think of the episode what do you think the spin-off and also mossy's book is going to be about and what do you guys truly think of the amphibia ending are you really sad because yes i'm happy to watch the episode but i'm devastated that this is ending like next week we're not getting anything for our house speaking of our house um next i mean tomorrow we'll be uploading the our house episode review and then you know so on into the finale but yes i mean guys comments below what do you guys think about this and yep see you later frog dudes and do that.